Good evening to all of you. Welcome to our class today. Now, um, what did we discuss last time? Did we start off on how to manage inventory? Sharon? Yes. Um, yeah, we were talking on manage, uh, managing inventory and I think the last thing we, we, were, we dealt with was cost order discount. We did a question where there was discount the supplier is giving. Sorry? You did an example where the supplier is giving discounts. No, we didn't do any example actually. It oh, was so we, we just yeah, we just introduced um the the introduction part of the managing inventory. Mm -hmm. Did yeah. it on EOQ model? No, we didn't reach on EOQ. Actually, we were still on the the concept, the terms, the purchase cost, holding cost, stock oh. out cost. That is oh. what we are still explaining. Oh. Okay, 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 thank you, thank you. Thank you. I assume this this way we are the cost of having high discount, uh, the cost of having high inventory, the cost of having low inventory balances. We discuss all these. Okay, not all because um, yeah, we were there on the lost quantity discount. On the lost quantity discount. Yes. Ah, okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, maybe a simple uh, recap of what we discussed then, okay, uh, from what I've just had, okay. So we made an introduction towards inventory management, okay, and I think if, uh, as we had mentioned then, is that when it comes to the inventory management, okay, uh, the key purpose or the key objective we want to achieve is cost minimization. So the key thing we want to, to, to have or the key objective of managing the inventory is to be able to establish the inventory quantities, okay, upon which as a company, you will be able to minimize the total inventory cost, okay? Of course, we give the pros and cons of having high inventories, uh, as well as uh, the cost implication in case we have low inventory balances, okay? The think we mentioned uh, all that, okay? So, but at the end of the day, uh, whatever policy or the policy that you're going to be advising the company, okay, or you as a finance manager, you, should, you ought to be advising uh, the company is based on uh, the cost, okay, or rather the purpose or the objective uh, or whatever policy we're following should be the one that, or should be the one that uh, will be minimizing the total cost that the company do income, okay. So, of course, definitely, okay, you want to be, for you to be able to start to, Say that this policy is the best policy. Of course, there are two things that you want to know. Okay, uh, the first is called, called the reorder quantity. Okay, or referred to as the reorder quantity. In the reorder quantity, simply every time that you're going to be asking supplier, in case you do manufacture, of course you do require uh, suppliers for raw material. Okay, so of course you'll be asking them provide us with raw material X units of raw material uh, uh, for us to manufacture. Okay, so the quantities that you'll be asking the supplier to supply you with, okay? That you're going to be assuming that it's going to be optimal, it will refer to as the reorder quantity, okay? The amount of units, the amount of uh, inventory quantities you're going to be purchasing uh, from the supplier, upon which you're going to be able to minimize the total inventory cost, is what referred to as the reorder quantity, okay? If you can be able to establish at what quantity, at what reorder quantity uh, do we, are we able to minimize the holding cost and of course ordering cost, then you are able to establish therefore your optimal reorder quantity. The other thing you want to establish, okay, when you can say that you have in quote you have managed your inventory well, is being able to know what is my reorder level, okay. Uh, your level simply is the units, okay. Uh, by the time you're going to make a new, a new unit, you're going to make a new order for you for some units with, from supplier. What is the inventory quantity you have in stock? Okay, so the inventory you have in stock, okay, uh, at the time when you do place a new order with your supplier, is what that was the order level, okay. 
So how many units do you have okay, uh, in stock okay, that are going to ensure that we, do, we avoid the chance of having low inventory balances? At the same time, we don't have excessive uh, stock at our, at, our, at our store. So the inventory you have in stock that is going to trigger a new order to be made to a supplier is what we refer to as the reorder level. If you can be able to establish these two, okay, the reorder quantity and the reorder level, if you can be able to establish these two as a company, then of course you have been able to simply manage your working capital efficiently, okay? Being able to tell what is my reorder quantity, what is my reorder level, okay? One of the models that can help us in being able to establish our optimal reorder quantity and by optimality is simply the point at which we are able to minimize the total inventory cost. That will mean by optimality here. Okay. So one of the models, okay, which we can use so can help us in managing inventory in establishing the optimal reorder quantity is called the economic order quantity model. Okay, which you, I think you really discuss uh, in manual accounting. But either way, I will repeat it. Okay. Now the EOQ model, okay, the EOQ, the inventory uh, order quantity uh, uh, model for managing inventory. Now, first of all, like any other model, of course, you're going to be making assumptions uh, that we assume or hold uh, for the model to work. Okay, so first of all, this model is what we call is a, a stochastic model. Okay, so don't worry about the formula. Okay, so there are models. Okay, so at the end of the day, what you want to establish is the Q, the economic order quantity. Okay, being more established. Uh, or how many units, okay, should I be, every time I buy from a supplier, how many units would I be asking them to give to me, okay, to supply to me as a company? So if that is the optimal, or rather, the Q proposed by the EOQ model, the Q, I mean, that you are a quantity proposed by the EOQ model, is a, will be the quantity upon which is a company. You will be able to minimize the sum of holding costs and the ordering costs, okay? Which in plan, therefore, if you are to order above the Q proposed by the EOQ model, then the cost, the, the sum of those two will be increasing. If you are to place orders below the Q proposed by the model, then the sum of those two will also be increasing. So you should therefore, if you are to have a simple graph, okay, then you're going to have the point of automatically at the Q. If also draw a very simple graph here, okay. Okay, if I was to draw a very simple graph here, okay, where this is time, this is quantity, okay. Okay, let me reverse it. This is cost. So this is cost, and this is quantity, okay. At the point when you're going to have, the, if you're going to stick, okay, if you do stick the Q proposed by your Q model, then it will be at this point. At this point, you are able to minimize the total inventory cost. Okay, by here, the total relevant cost, I mean, the invent, the holding cost, the total inventory cost, the total uh, relevant inventory cost will be the holding cost. Okay, so the sum of those two, the holding cost, okay, plus the ordering cost, plus the ordering cost. Okay, and this is achieved at the point when we have the Q proposed by the Q model. Okay, so in case you make orders below the Q, then the cost is increasing. Okay, as you can see, if you make above the Q, the cost will also be increasing. So at the Q proposed by the Q model, the cost is at the minimum. Okay, so the model, this EOQ model, is helping us in being able to tell, okay, what should be the Q that we ought to be buying our inventory at to ensure we minimize the cost of these two elements, the holding cost and the ordering cost, okay? Because those are the only two uh, relevant uh, costs, uh, inventory costs that we are going to be considering when it comes to the EOQ model. As I mentioned, in, like any other model, the EOQ model, okay, of course, to make assumptions, okay? And by the way, uh, the assumptions that the model uh, normally assumes, if those assumptions cannot apply in reality, if those assumptions cannot apply in reality, in short, they don't uh, pass a reality check, okay? Then we assume that those assumptions are the limitations, okay? If those assumptions can't hold waters in court, okay? Then those assumptions become, therefore, the model limitation. In the assumptions of the OQ model, okay? One of them is that you can be able to start, you can be able to tell, you can be able to forecast, you can be predict that in the next one financial year, the total units that the company shall be consuming, 
if you're buying raw material, okay, in KG, okay, you're making, uh, let's say, you're making bread, okay, but in the next one financial year, how many uh, kgs of wheat flour will I be requiring? Okay, you can then be able to focus and be able to tell the cause, the amount of kgs of wheat flour that I will be requiring in the next one financial year is equal to this amount of kg with 10,000 kg, for example. You can be able to focus and predict the total annual demand. And the, and the period of assessment, the period of analysis, okay, is always one year. Okay, when it comes to working capital, okay, if you're given, for example, figures that are based on a week, they're based on a monthly basis, monthly basis, because you convert them into annual basis, okay. But of course, you can also be able to focus, uh, uh, to determine, okay, what will be uh, the cost you'll be incurring for every order you make with the supplier, okay. You can, that cost will cost definitely. For the next one financial year, you can all assume that it shall remain fixed, okay. Of course, the other cost will include, for example, the cost you incur for uh, the main cost, a bit of it, okay. You do have a procurement department. You pay them salaries, those employees who work in that department. It's part and parcel of your own end cost, okay. So the fee or rather, uh, the admin fee being carried, uh, the salaries you'll be paying to the employees in the procurement department, okay, is not going to increase in the next financial year, okay. If it's about transport, in case you're the one who go and pick those raw material uh, from the supplier, okay, your EABL, you're the one who goes and pick berries from the farmers down there, okay. So don't forget, you have to go, it is, you have to quantify that cost because you are the one who do incur the carriage inward cost. Okay, so that cost also is going to be known and shall remain fixed during the next one financial year. So the entire holding cost, the, the entire cost of ordering is going to be known and shall remain fixed during the next one financial year. The same applies to the case of the holding cost, okay, the cost you can for having the inventory in the warehouse, the finance cost, okay, uh, the personal finance is you, okay, for, uh, to buy the inventory. Don't forget, if you remember, we did mention regarding the working capital, someone must finance working capital, and this, of course, includes the inventory. So in case you're going to buy inventory worth $10 or worth 100 shillings, then someone must have given you that 100 shillings, okay, either from the shareholder or from the bank. Okay, so of course they will be expecting a return for giving you their money, okay, the cost of capital, and it's part and parcel of the company holding costs, okay. So the cost of capital, capital is going to be main constant, okay, to be a fixed interest rate, for example, okay. Uh, same applies to the case of the insurance, okay. Don't forget, uh, insurance cost is part of also holding cost. If you have stock in uh, your premises, of course you may want to take insurance cover against theft, against fire, so that's part of, is part and parcel of having a stock with you. Because in case you didn't have the stock, why would you pay the insurance cover? Okay, there's no need to pay for it, okay? Therefore, by you having the inventory, you end up paying an insurance cover. So it is part of holding cost, okay? The securities, in case you do have, for example, I don't know, there's a gas, for example, okay? You do have, you do have securities, okay? So of course you pay a fee for it, for the security you'll be hiring uh, to protect your commodities, okay? All these costs, okay, uh, are going to be, remain focused, they're going to remain fixed, okay? During that next one financial year, okay? And they're going to be known, okay? There's no surprises uh, uh, in this model, okay? All the factors are going to be already be called predetermined, okay? What's called, that is a deterministic model, at the same time, we assume, okay, that the suppliers, okay, they don't give you discounts, okay. So irrespective of the units you buy from them, okay, irrespective of the units you buy from them, they don't give in discount, okay. So in this particular market, there is no any discount you get on quantities, okay. Of course, as just mentioned, don't forget these assumptions. If they cannot apply in reality, then those assumptions become therefore the limitations of the model, okay. And as you can see so far, well, that is one of the limitations of the model. Okay, the assumption that uh, the supplier don't give discounts, it doesn't hold water, okay? Because at the end of the day, suppliers, they're giving you, in case you do have a stock, okay? You do have a store. Of course, you're going to give your customer discount. If they buy from you more, of course, you give them more discounts, okay? The assumption that the economy, the participants in the economy uh, don't give discounts, okay? It seems a bit awkward, okay? The assumption you can be able to tell that uh, in the next one financial year, the amount of units I'll be selling is equal to 10,000, and that is going to remain as 10,000. Of course, it's also uh, as per se in quota fallacy. It's, it's not possible, okay, to be able to forecast the future, okay, to be able to tell that the fixed costs I've been carrying will be this much. The cost I've been carrying, the, uh, uh, the cost of transporting my goods into the premises is this much, okay? It, it, it doesn't hold water, okay? 
and also say that the assumption of this model, okay, if you try to uh, try to dig deeper, okay, these are limit these assumptions become the for the limitations of the model, okay. I'm trying to mention this because sometimes the examiner in okay, ask you discuss the limitation of a given model. So you simply go back to the assumptions and you try to see those, uh, are those assumptions uh, are, are they realistic? Those assumptions, okay. And of course, an assumption that is made in this particular model is what called instantaneous replenishment. Okay, that if, for example, uh, the lead time is meant to be two days, then to be two days. Okay. Uh, uh, it is not going, there's no surprise that uh, you, you're going to get those goods earlier than what you had, uh, you had planned for, uh, as well as you're not going to be getting them later than what you're expecting. If it is meant to be two days, it's two days. If it's meant to be zero day, it's meant to be zero days. Okay, that assumption uh, that we do uh, assume. Okay, so all those assumptions, therefore, as I mentioned, that come for the limitations of the model. Okay, the assumption that for the model limitations. Now, as I mentioned, don't forget, since supplier don't give quantity discount, supplier, they don't give you discount, it implies, therefore, that the purchase cost is fixed, okay? That's, that's true. I my head, don't forget, the purchase cost, just put it aside here, okay, the purchase cost is simply going to be equal to, in an year, how many units do I buy, okay? I buy, uh, let's say, D, okay? What was the price per unit, okay? It was equal to, let's say, uh, $10, okay? It implies, therefore, since the price is fixed, and why is the price fixed? Because there's no discount you're receiving, okay? So the price remains the same for the entire one financial year. So since the price remains fixed, as well as the annual demand remains fixed, it does not matter, therefore, at what level you buy the, you buy the at how many units you buy from the supplier. The purchase cost, the total purchase cost remain fixed, okay? And that's why, therefore, uh, generally we can ignore it when doing the analysis, okay? Because it is irrelevant, okay? It is fixed, okay? It is not influenced by the amount of units that you do buy from the supplier, okay? So in most of the time, we do ignore the purchase cost. Which implies, therefore, the total relevant inventory cost, okay? The total relevant inventory cost is made off of two, the holding cost, plus the ordering cost. Okay, so the holding cost plus the ordering cost. So in this case, we are ignoring. Not that, not that we don't incur that cost, but ignoring the purchase cost. Why? Because it is. it does not matter at what queue you buy those inventory ads. You pay the same. That's why, therefore, it is a fixed cost and therefore an irrelevant cost when it comes to helping us in making the decision uh, so at what queue we ought to be at the ordering ads. Either way, the holding cost okay, is given us. Let's give it therefore the holding cost. Okay. And the holding cost is given us, okay. What's the average inventory in a given year? Okay. If you have to go and take make a stock take, okay, so therefore you go and do the count, okay. How many inventory can you find? Okay. If for example, we assume that assumption uh, where there's no any uh, 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 minimum stock the company keep, okay, then the graph of inventory, okay, this quantity of inventory versus time, okay, may be a PSA then. Okay, sorry. Okay, it will be say a thing. Okay, therefore, this is Q, this is time, quantity versus time. Then you're going to have once you just place an order with the supplier and you have the receipt of those goods, and of course, the inventory balance is at the highest point. Okay. And of course, if you assume constant consumption of the inventory, then of course they'll be decreasing at a constant rate. Okay. And of course, you make an order. Oh, exactly. Of course, you make an order, then of course the inventory balance goes back to high. Okay. Okay, more or less that's going to be. Okay, Q, uh, if you were to have quantity versus time. Okay. Would imply that for if you just made a lot of a thousand units, it will be therefore uh, at the time zero, okay. There is time at time zero, we have the inverted thousand. At time, let's say two weeks later, okay, the inverted balance is at zero at zero point. Okay. The question is therefore, what's the average inventory for this company? It's the it has, as out, uh, the thousand they have in week zero plus the inventory balance they have at the end of week two, which is equal to zero. We divide by two, okay. That was simply a thousand, okay, plus zero divided by two. What is a thousand? Okay, it's a unit you've just bought from supplier. That's what we say this Q plus zero divided by two. And that's we have Q divided by two. Okay. 
That is the average inventory. You do have in stock at any point in time. Of course, as I mentioned, every stock you have, you do pay a cost for it. Okay. In this case, the holding cost per unit per year. Okay. The holding cost, how much cost do you have for one inventory? Okay. And this is the inventory balance that you have. Okay. The Q divided by two. You see that the whole, the 500 units, you have multiplied by the cost you have for having that one unit. Okay. For the entire one year. And here, therefore, the total holding cost. Next, you have to quantify the ordering cost. Okay. To quantify the ordering cost. And the ordering cost is in an year, how many uh, orders do you place with the supplier? Okay. Uh, how many orders do you place with your supplier? Okay. How many units do you order with your supplier? Okay. Because therefore, the total cost of making orders is first we get the number of orders okay, in an year. How many orders do you make? Okay. You make 10 orders. Okay. Number of orders you multiply. And to make one order, what cost do you incur? You incur the cost per order. Okay, the admin cost, as, uh, as we had mentioned, uh, the fine, uh, the uh, procurement cost you're doing for the salaries of the uh, employees in procurement department. Okay, so the number of orders you make per year, okay, you multiply by make the cost for making one order. Okay, the question, therefore, how do you get the number of orders? Okay, if, for example, in a year we have we do require 12,000 units, okay, in a year, this is the total units you require. And every time you make an order with the supplier, you do buy from them 2,000 units. The next question is, therefore, in a year, therefore, how many orders do you make? Okay, it will be equal to 12,000, the number of units required in a year. We divide by the number of orders, the number of units you make per order. Okay, give it, therefore, 12,000, divide by 2,000 to give, therefore, six orders. So in a year, you do make six orders. Okay, which is given us the 12,000, the annual demand. We divide by the 2,000, the, um, the quantity of inventory you buy per order, okay? Which well, is simply equal to the annual demand, which is D, divided by Q, which Q is this, the size of the order, okay? We multiply by the cost per order, okay, which we have here, okay? And that, therefore, Q, therefore, the total cost of placing orders in the given year. Number of orders times the cost per order, simple as that. And that's on the E or Q model, okay? E or Q model, okay? Question? If you know question, I think you can apply. So these are examples of costs. Hey, uh, I think I've already mentioned them, so I won't go through again. So the key concern, therefore, is to get the Q, okay? And the Q, that is the optimal real quantity uh, proposed by the model is given us square root of uh, the two times annual demand times cost per order, we divide by the whole cost per unit per year, okay? And that therefore give us therefore what will be the cost per, or what will be the optimal the order quantity, the point at which we are able to minimize the total inventory cost. Question? Of course, this formula you have to remember either way, okay? So this formula you have to uh, remember it. The exam does give you formula, okay? So it's quite unfortunate that uh, you may be forced to cram it. Okay, but it's not, easy, it's not a hard formula. Uh, uh, if you just try once, two times, you it's just ticks, okay? And let's do a question here. We apply the model. Actually, let's anyway, let's do it. Go through it, then we attend it together. Okay, I'm assuming that you have gone through the question. So let's attempt it. Let's attempt it together. Now in this example, you are meant to assess how the company has the option of making its uh, your order at 200, at 400, and at 600. So 200, 400, and at 600. So the question is that between those three uh, different the order quantities, which one is going to be the optimal? Okay, as I mentioned, uh, the, in quote, the optimality is based on cost, definitely. So you want to make an, an evaluation of the inventory cost at 200, cost at 600, and cost at 400. And of course, we advise the company uh, to be reordering using based on uh, what order quantities. We end up getting the minimum inventory cost. In this example, there is no discounts. Which means, therefore, you can ignore the purchase cost when it comes to make the decision 
you can ignore the purchase cost. Okay, which I will, I will ignore because there's no there's no need for it to determine it. It will not it, it won't help you in making the decision. Okay, therefore. It means therefore the total relevant inventory cost. Okay. Therefore, total uh, relevant inventory cost. Okay, is equal to holding cost plus ordering cost. Okay, holding cost Q divided by two average inventory times holding cost per unit per year plus the number of orders per year D divided by Q times the cost per order. Okay, so in we can begin at 200 as uh, two Q of 200. Okay, let me just Q of 200, 200 units we can begin there. The cost will be equal to Q is 200, therefore 200 divided by two. The holding cost per unit per year is equal to one dollar, okay, plus the number of the, the annual demand. Mm -hmm. Let me just refer back to the question. Mm -hmm. It is forty thousand. Uh, forty thousand. Thank you. Forty thousand. Okay, the annual demand is forty thousand. Forty thousand divide by Q, which in this case is two hundred time cost per order, which is equal to two dollars. To give us how much with the cost in case we really order two hundred units? Five hundred. We we'll get the cost of five hundred dollars. Okay, thank you. Now what if now we increase the Q to four hundred units? We make evaluation. What if now the Q is four hundred units? Same process. Okay. Now Q we see I'm simply using this formula. Okay. So just plug it in. Okay. So Q is equal to four hundred. Okay, we divide by two average inventory. Uh, we multiply by the coding cost per unit per year, one dollar. Okay, the annual demand remains the same. Okay, it remains fixed, forty thousand. We divide by Q, which in this case is now four hundred. Okay, we multiply by the cost powder, which still remains at two hundred dollars. Okay, give us how much cost at four hundred dollars, four hundred units. Four hundred dollars. Four hundred dollars. Okay, we get forty dollars. Thank you. Next, we mean us to get the cost. Uh, we get the cost in case we reorder. So, what if now the Q will be at 600 units? So, 600 units. Therefore, the cost will be equal to holding cost Q 600 divided by 2. Holding cost is still remain at $1. Okay. D will be the same. The annual demand will be the same. Divide by 600 times $2. It was how much cost? Uh, for thirty-three. You get for the three dollars. Okay, so we get for three dollars. So there is a company. What therefore should be the order policy of this company? What's the order country? Is the optimal order country? Four hundred units. The company therefore should reorder its inventory. So the company or the firm should reorder. Should reorder its inventory. Should reorder its inventory. Inventories and Q of 400. Okay, since since it results true, it results true the lowest. Okay, the lowest inventory, the lowest inventory cost. Don't forget, you can't just you can't just say 400. Okay, you need to go ahead and say why is it 400? Okay, because at 400 we have the lowest inventory cost, lowest relevant inventory cost. Okay. Simple as that. Okay. Don't forget, as I mentioned, there is no discount the supply is given. Okay. So do no discount be given. So therefore, you can ignore the purchase cost. Immaculate. I have a question. Yeah. Um, while we are doing this for me, why mm. don't we use uh, um p p by d the purchase price by demand? It is part of the invent cost. However. It doesn't help you in making the decision. Why 
because irrespective of the queue, whether you're going to buy at 200, at 400, at 600, the price, the price times demand remain constant. So it's a fixed cost. So it's not helping you else. That's why we are ignoring it. Not that, uh, not that it is not part of inventory, it is part of the inventory cost. However, we are simply ignoring it altogether. Okay. Okay. Then if we ignore it in this case, when mm. is it relevant then? In okay, we'll do an example. We'll do an example. All right, thank you. Okay. Okay, so that's on uh, the now, what would be the Q? Okay, okay. Uh, if we are to see uh, all the assumptions of the EOQ uh, being upheld here, like the Q, the D is going to remain constant, uh, the fixed cost also remain constant, holding costs remain constant. So all the assumptions, more or less, of the EOQ are also being held up in this particular case. Okay. Now, what would be the Q that was that is proposed by this model? Okay. Uh, by this example. Okay. If we are to analyze and determine the queue that uh, the optimal quality proposed by the UQ model, okay, for this example, okay, uh, the queue just remind you is equal to two annual demand cost per order, holding cost per year, okay, to be equal to two times annual demand, 40,000, cost per order, two dollars, we divide by one, which is the holding cost per unit per year. That is a queue that is proposed by the UQ model. And how much do you get by the, then we can make a comparison. But in case you have to use the EOQ model, not that you've been asked to do that, but in case you have to use the uh, one. one. Okay, so you get 400. And as you can see, therefore, at uh, the EOQ of 400, which is the EOQ actually, okay, which you got here, we end up with the lowest uh, inventory cost at $40. Okay, now let's do another example. <clears throat> Always very clear. If it is not clear, don't forget, always ask. Okay, let's do another example. Okay, let me just leave that example. I combine it with another one. Yes, okay, this example. Okay, let me extend it to one. So we just uh, look at one thing altogether and do this example. I think this is a better example. Yes, okay. Go through this, then we discuss together. Now, what with the queue in case assuming that don't forget in this example uh, we have discount suppliers giving so therefore one of the assumption of the EOQ model uh, has been uh, negated more or less okay uh, is not being upheld okay now assuming that there was no uh, discount what will be the queue yeah assuming that you ignore ignore that this part okay so ignore uh, these parts okay uh, what would be the Q in case we have to assume that there is no quantity discount? The Q proposed by the OQ model. What do you get?
So in case we reduce the EOQ, assume that all the assumptions of EOQ have been upheld, okay, then we get 160. How do we get 160? C will equal to, okay, 200 demand cost per order, the overhaul cost per year. So what we need to get here is the holding cost. Holding cost is what you should be careful, okay. And the holding cost here is equal to 18% of the stock value. Stock value is simply the amount you pay for it, and you pay 25. So times 25. To give us 4 points. 4.5. 4.5 dollars. That's because for the only cost. I think everything else is wasted for it. Therefore, two times annual demand. This demand is per month. Therefore, you convert it into per annum. Don't forget, as mentioned, the analysis is always based on per year. Okay. So we get therefore annual demand 1800. That is 150 times 12. So 150 times 12 gives us annual demand 1800 times cost per order, which is equal to two pounds divided by, okay, the holding cost per unit, which is equal to 4.5. And you get 160 units. And you get 160 units to be the Q, in case that you use your Q model. Okay. Now, let's go back to the case question, okay. The question here has discount. So, we mean, therefore, we do not expect that the Q proposed by the EOQ will be the optimal. But that's just the analysis, okay. But we don't expect that the Q proposed by the EOQ will be optimal. Why? Because one of the assumptions of the EOQ is not being up, is not, has not been upheld in this particular case, okay. So... <clears throat> Okay, so we can begin the first case. Okay, we get the cost. So assuming now here, we want to get a discount. Okay, and the discount here we're getting is one percent, and the minimum amount of inventory must buy for you to get this one percent is one hundred fifty. Okay, so we can begin there. We get the cost in case we were to uh, reorder our inventory at one hundred fifty. Let me just share. Okay, put here. Okay, so Q of 150. Don't forget here, you're getting a discount, 1%. Therefore, the purchase price is not fixed. It's 1% less. With the implied therefore now, we can include the purchase cost as part of relevant cost of inventory. Okay, therefore, the purchase price is 99% of 25. And you pay how much? Okay, now the, the, purchase, the price per unit is not fixed. Okay, that's what you can see therefore in the income part of relevant cost, which of course, therefore, we also need to acknowledge. 24.75. 24.75. Yeah. 24.75, which you also definitely need to acknowledge. Therefore, total cost of inventory now, okay, so let's say invent because, okay, this should, done, should have done before. Okay. Therefore, doing the analysis. So here, you can say invent because, therefore, since you have a discount is equal to purchase cost, purchase cost plus holding cost. Plus holding cost plus ordering cost. Now because you have a discount, we need to include the purchase cost. Purchase cost of course price times the demand, okay, plus holding cost the way it was before, Q by two times holding cost point per year. Number of orders per E, D per year, Q is D divided by Q, we multiply by cost per order. Okay. Therefore, we're going to begin our Q. So let's begin here. We begin with the first Q, that is Q is equal to 150. Okay. Therefore, price here, we have done the price already. Okay. So we have the price here already. Uh, then the holding cost is dependent on, on the stock value or the amount you paid for the stock which means by therefore the cost the holding cost is 18 percent of the new stock value the amount you paid for the stock which is 24.75 and get how much four point don't forget the amount you paid for now the stock is decreasing and the holding cost is dependent on the amount you paid okay 4.455 4.46. You get 4.46 because therefore the holding cost per unit per year. Okay. So having done that, I think you've done everything because uh, uh, D will remain the same. Mm, yeah, yes, can do. So therefore, they can say the cost be equal to the purchase cost price is 24.75. Demand remain at 1800. 
plus Q is now 150 divided by 2 times holding cost is now 4.46. The number of orders per year and the annual demand is 1800. Q is 150 and the cost per order is 32 pounds. To give us how much will the cost? As you can see now, we are including the purchase cost. Why? Because now the purchase cost is now relevant. Okay, it's not fixed. Candy. Okay. Uh, on the on the holding cost, mm. uh, why are we using the the quantity as one fifty instead of the annual? And the quantity where? Uh, if, let me just try to pick it up. So here, oh where? Sorry, sorry. Uh, there it's, it's here. Yes. Here, why is it, why are you using one fifty than other than one eighteen hundred? Yeah, the annual. Oh, because oh, let me just draw the graph again. Hope it's going to the graph that we are doing here. So this is time. Uh, this is quantity. Assume that you don't keep any buffer stock, you don't keep any uh, uh, main on stock. So therefore, assume you've just made an order and you've gotten the inventory, therefore the inventory balance now is at 150, isn't it? Because that's mm -hmm. what you got from the supplier, okay? This is now 150. Mm -hmm. Then you use inventory constantly until zero. Then you make another order, all the until the end of the year. That's how the inventory is going to be behave like, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Is it? Because here, we forget this is zero, okay? So we assume you don't keep any minimum stock. You use until you drain, you make an order, you get it immediately, uh, push back the inventory back to 150. So the cycle remained like that for the year, isn't it? Yeah. Then the question is, what is, if you have to do a stock take any day, okay, within the entire year, what is the amount of stock you can find in the VM premises? It can be above 150, because that's what you have. Maximum at the point when you make the order, that's what you have 150, is it? Yeah, it can't be above 150, it can't be below zero, is it? Okay, yeah, it's yeah. implied that for on average basis, how much can you fight? 150 plus zero, do it better, is it? Okay, yeah, that's why it, it can't be about it can't be 1800 because on average basis, yeah, how much it, it, can we go to the stock and fight? Oh, okay, is, okay, is it now. Yeah. Okay, okay. That's why we do Q, we do 150 divided by 2. And we get how much we the cost? It is 45, 268.5. So you get 45,269 pounds with the cost in case the company uh, make its orders at 150. Now, in the same question, we need a case where, uh, what if we are to stick in quotes with the Q proposed uh, by the UQ? Don't forget, in this case, UQ doesn't apply, okay? But just for our own analysis, why? Because one of the assumptions uh, the, one of the assumptions of EOQ is not there. The assumption of no discount, uh, in this case, is discount. So, uh, but just for our, for our own analysis, not that we need to do this, but for our own analysis, let's do the Q that was proposed by the EOQ, which is 160. Okay. A Q of 160 units. The cost will equal to. The price, don't forget here, it remain the same because if we have to go back to the question, 160 is between 150 and 299. Going back to the question, you're going to get 1% discount in case you order 150, okay, 150 and above, but not above 300 because in case you buy 300, you get an extra discount. 160 is between 150 and of course the 299 here. So they will still get 1% discount. So the price, the folding cost remain the same like you've just done at 150. Clear there? Okay, hope it is. Yeah. <clears throat> no, it's not. I think it's not here. I'm, uh, I'm lost somewhere. Okay, let me go back. 
the queue that we did, we did a case where we had EOQ. Okay, the, the, we have just run it right now. We had the EOQ for this. In case we have to assume there's no discount, okay, the queue proposed with EOQ was 160 units. Yes. Is it? Yeah. And now we want to purchase, we want to reorder, okay, our inventory at 160. If you do that, then what is going to happen is that you're going to be getting the 1% discount. Why? Because if you look at this statement, 1% discount is given for orders of 150 and above, but not above 300. Because if you do reorder 300, you get an extra discount, the 2% this time. 160 is between 150 here and 299. Is it? Because if you do 300, then that's an extra discount. So this range is only for 150 to 299, which is where we have 160 here. Okay, yeah, I get it's clear. It's clear. Yeah, yeah, which, it means for case, which implies that for, uh, if we reorder at 160, the price remains as it, let me just go back to uh, our board here. Which means therefore, in case we were to reorder, okay, and we reorder at 160, the price remain as it is here, the 24.5, the holding cost remain as this year, 4.46, because it will only get 1% discount, okay, the 99% here, okay. So, yes, therefore, we reorder at 160, the cost purchase price remain the same, 24.75 times 1800. The Q now is 160, so 160 divided by 2 times 4.46, 1800 divided by 160, the Q times 32. Always, it's, it's, it's quite clear. The purchase price will be the same, the holding cost will be the same, because we all, we, that range is 1%. Okay, and you get 45? 45 to 67. And get what five two six seven okay slightly two pounds cheaper but anyway okay so don't forget you don't need to do this but it was just for our own consumption more or less okay now you get for five two sixty seven kind of for the cost in case you were to reorder at a queue of one sixty the EOQ EOQ in quotes because this is not the EOQ okay why because the assumption of EOQ are not been uh, uh, they have not been upheld here. Now, what if we want to get to go to the higher discount level? We want to get the higher discount level, okay? If you want to get the 2%, okay? If you want to get the 2%, if you want to get the 2%, then you must reorder at least 300 units, okay? So, just going back here. If you want to get the 2% the discount here, you must order at least 300 units, okay? Now let's order the bare minimum. Okay, we see whether it's worthwhile. Okay, so the, we order at 300. <coughs> if we do a 300, okay, the price will be equal to, now it's 2% discount, therefore you pay 98% of 25. And the holding cost will be equal to, what do we get here? And here you get 24 points. How much do you pay 24. for? 24.5. Yes. 4.5. The holding cost is 18% of what we just paid, which is 24.5. To give us 4 points? 4.41. 4 4.41 for the holding cost. So again, the holding cost is dependent on the amount you're paying. And having done that, the Q, we ordered Q of 300 units. Okay, be equal to the purchase price plus holding cost uh, plus ordering cost. Therefore, the cost be equal to Purchase price, okay, the purchase cost is the purchase price per unit, which is 24.5 times the number of orders, number of units you buy in an year, 1800. Plus the Q now is 300, 300 divided by 2 to get the average inventory times the holding cost, 4.41. Plus the number of orders per year. And the number of orders per year we make is equal to 1800. Divide by 300, that gives us for the number of orders we make per year, we multiply the cost powder, which remain at two pounds. The cost, in case we order 300, you get 40. Give us a minute. You get 44, 
954 pounds become therefore the total cost in case we are to reorder a 300. As you can see, the cost is decreasing. Okay, if you have to go uh, back and compare, okay, compare, okay, uh, with the queue that was proposed by the EOQ, you can see the cost is even much more higher. So, therefore, as I, um, as I mentioned, okay, once one of the assumption of the EOQ doesn't apply, then there's no guarantee, okay, that the queue proposed by the EOQ remain optimal, like you have seen in this case. The cost here is even higher than the cost we carry here. Yeah, there it was 45, here it is 44. Okay. Now let's get the extra discount. Okay. In case you want to get the extra discount, the 4% discount, then you must order at least 800 units. Okay. If you order uh, 300 units, let's go back to a question. If you order 800 units, if you are 800 units, then you get a 4% discount. Okay, you get a 4% discount. Okay, so let's get the discount. If that happen, therefore, the cost will be equal to, first is get the price, the price will be equal to 96% times uh, 25. Golden cost will be equal to 18% uh, of whatever the price you get. What's the price by units? 24. 24. 24. 24. Yes. 24. What it costs is 18% of 24. To give us 4.32. 4 4.32. 4 okay. 4.32. So having obtained those two, you can now read for the question. They have cost be equal to purchase cost 24 times annual demand 1800 plus the holding cost we incur, which is Q divided by 2. Q is now 800. Okay, divide by two times the cost per oh, the whole cost per unit per year, which you've just obtained here, the 4.32. Plus, how many orders we make in an year? The number of orders we make per, in an year is the annual demand 1800 divided by Q, which is 800 times the cost per order, which is 32 pounds. All counts of the company's cost in case the Q is 800. Mm -hmm. 45,000. And we get 45,000. We get 45,000. Okay, yes, we get 5,000 for the cost in case we are to be ordered at 800. Of course, therefore, our main intention is to get the queue, okay, is not to get uh, to advise the company. Therefore, what is the optimal reorder quantity for this company? The optimal reorder quantity is 300 units at a discount of 2%. Yes, therefore the company should be reordering its inventory at a queue of 300, okay? The reorder quantity, the optimal reorder quantity for this company is 300. Why? Because at that point in time, the company is able to achieve the lowest or the minimum total in the event because of 44, 954. Okay, therefore, at 300, we have the minimum cost to the company. Therefore, it is the optimal. Don't forget, as I mentioned, the key intention is about minimization of the inventory cost. Clear? Clear. Mm -hmm. uh, um, can you please pardon why we are not using the EOQ formula in illustration one, the first illustration? Which illustration of that? I go back. Here, where? Yes. Uh, where? Not this illustration, the one that we did, the first illustration, why we didn't use the EOQ. Okay, I'll go back. This one, which one? Or oh, this one? Uh, yes, that one. Oh, this one? Yes. We, we did. If I remember, we did, this. we did the EOQ. And the EOQ was the 400 here. But you said that uh, 
you told us that we assumed something. Oh. I, I forgot what it was. You assumed something. Okay. okay, so my question is, so if you use the EOQ formula and yeah. uh, you'd be right, if you only use the EOQ formula. No, for this example, for this example, okay, also, uh, if I was to get you quite correctly, uh, the examiner is going to guide you. Should you use the EOQ? Uh, should you use the Q he is proposing? Like in this example, you didn't need to use the EOQ because uh, like I see the requirement of the question is you get the calls at 200, at 400, and 600. So you don't need to get the EOQ. Uh, but in most of the time, the exam will tell you, I want you to get the cost at the EOQ policy. So in case the examiner doesn't inform you of that, then you don't need to do that. But I think we need that for our own consumption. Okay, because the, re the reason I was asking that it's because in the, the other example you told us mm. that uh, because you are given a discount, you are not mm. going to use the EOQ formula. No, oh, okay. So this example, the, the, this, this one we have, we have it right now. No, the, yes, yes, this one. Yes, so in this example, don't forget, you can't use the EOQ. Why can't you use the EOQ? Because here, the supplier is giving discounts. And you say, if you remember, one of the assumptions, I mean, let me take you back to the assumption of EOQ, okay? Yeah, I do remember them. <laughs> okay, so one of the assumptions of EOQ well, is, was the supplier don't give discount. So this one of the assumptions, the supplier don't give discount. Which imply, therefore, since now we are going against the assumption of EOQ, then you cannot say that the Q proposed by the EOQ in quote is the optimal. Well, it is no longer optimal. Why? Because the Q proposed, the assumption of EOQ are not being upheld in this example. I don't know whether they get my point. Okay. It's because we have gone against the assumption. Don't forget, for the EOQ to apply, the assumption must hold. All the assumption must hold. If one of them is not holding, then there's no guarantee the Q proposed by the EOQ is giving the optimal. Like in this example, mm -hmm. this discount supply is given, which means therefore you don't know that, or quite unlikely, uh, the Q proposed by the EOQ is giving the optimal. Even if there's no EOQ, you can't use the EOQ model. That's what I'm trying to say. Because the assumption of the EOQ are not being upheld here. Okay, they're not being upheld in this example. Okay, fine then. Okay. So can you say the same for the other illustration that all the assumptions are not being held in yes. the first illustration? Mm -hmm. Can you also say that? This one? Yeah, the, the first illustration. Yes, that one. Can you also say, yes? No, this one, you can assume that they're being held. Why? Because if you check here, the price here is constant, it's not decreasing. The annual demand mm -hmm. is constant, it's not increasing. The whole recalls may be the same, the recalls may be the same. So they are being they are being upheld. So you can use the EOQ here. If one okay. assumption, if for example, you know, the coding cost it will be decreasing, okay? That the holding cost for 200 will be let's say at um, uh, let's say one dollar at 400 to be two dollars at 300 or three dollars, then one of the assumptions EOQ has been negated because the assumption EOQ is the holding cost remain constant and fixed. But this time now is not fixed. Okay, I'm just trying to assume. If one of the assumptions is not being upheld, then you can't use AUQ. Okay? Okay, fine. I get it now. Thank you. Okay, okay. So that is the case in case we are um, with AUQ. Now, sometime the supplier, let me just go back to the question yesterday, we are trying to attempt. So in this example, the discounts are based on the number of days. They're based on or they are based on what's time to use here. They're based on quantity. You're getting the discount based on the quantities here. Yeah, the discount are based on the quantity. Okay. How many exactly are you buying from the supplier? But sometimes the supplier gives discounts based on the number of days when you pay him. Okay. So for example, you can have an agreement that you do pay the supplier, you do buy goods on credit from them. And you pay them, let's say, uh, on day 60. So you pay two months later. So the supplier can come the proposal to entice you. Why don't you pay me in day 10? Okay, I don't have to wait until day 50 at day 60, and I'll give you a discount. So the supplier comes the proposal. You want to entice you, okay? So that you, as the the, uh, the customer, you pay him a bit earlier, and you get a discount of it. Okay, so that uh, is going to be 
more or less like part of the variables, okay? Which I think uh, before we do that, uh, I would propose that we do an example where there's no um, discounts is based on the quantity, okay? So let me share some question. <laughs> so let me share some question on the WhatsApp group uh, on some in event question, which I guess we can use, okay? So give me a minute, we, I share with you some question on inventory. By the way, more or less, it's part of the syllabus, but I think you did this in the MA, okay? And that's why in case you look at uh, some of your past paper question, okay? Uh, they are not so uh, frequently tested, okay? If anything, uh, for the last 10 years, I've seen one question, okay? But simple as the syllabus, you never know your examiner. That's why I always prefer to teach it, okay? But it's more or less going to be part of the MA. But part of the syllabus, so therefore I need to teach it. So give me a minute, I share with some questions from uh, your ACC counterpart. And by the way, by, if you get some material for financial management, okay, uh, for ACCA, okay, you can still use them for your course, okay? Uh, if you check uh, the ACCA financial management material, okay, both question and textbook, you can use them for your own consumption for this particular paper, okay? Uh, the papers are, are also different, okay? So you can still use them for your exam. Okay, either way, give me a question a minute. I share some of the questions from ACA, okay, which can apply for our, uh, our, our, our study here. Okay, I've shared some questions, okay, on the WhatsApp group, okay, so uh, you can check them out. Now, in question one, okay, so let's let me check the question is. Bit easier to begin with. Hmm, okay, we can do question two. Okay, we can do question two. So go through question two. I've shared on the WhatsApp group. Uh, go through question two and we attempt it together. Question two FLG company. I hope you know the question. You try to see what the examiner expects of the students in this example. Okay. Okay, we can turn together. So, the cost of the inventory, uh, in case it is a UQ, the cost in case you have to accept uh, the discounts uh, from the supplier, and of course, you need to advise the company. Okay. What's the cost? So, those who may have done the cost in case you use a UQ. If someone has done it? 1200 So cost the UQ, $1,200. Uh -huh. The cost in case you do get a discount for supplier? I think the, the 1200 is for it's the EOQ. It's the EOQ. Oh, that's the EOQ. No, okay, no, I wonder the cost. So you know done the cost? The cost is 72600. 72600. 600. Yes. Okay, okay. If you get a discount 722836. 722836. Okay. Okay. So you mean therefore you should not get a discount from supplier. Yes. Yeah, okay. Let's let's, let's copy it. Okay, so that should be the answer. Either way, let's try to attempt it together. Now, in this example, don't forget, supply is giving discounts, which means, therefore, we should include, therefore, the purchase cost. Okay, so, therefore, let me just, in a minute, I just take a photo of this to have my board, to strike my board. <clears throat> Okay, so let's attempt it. Go back to my board here. Okay, so in case we do EOQ, so remember EOQ, we get a Q. The EOQ will be equal to 200 demand cost per order, divide one cost per year. Therefore, the two, the 100 demand, we told that in an year, the units required uh, is 60,000. 
the cost per order will be told is equal to $6. The holding cost is equal to 0.5. To give us Q equal to how much? 200. 1,200. So 1,200 units. Okay, don't get this discount. And 1,200, do you get the discount? No, because the discount starts in case you order 10,000. So at 1,200, no discount you get. Okay, therefore. So therefore, the cost of current policy, uh, in, in case I choose a UQ policy, will be equal to total cost, will be equal to purchase cost, plus holding cost, plus ordering cost. Purchase cost, price times unit, and it gets to, you don't need to show the formula, by the way. But then in case you want to, like the way I'm doing here, Go ahead, but no max for the formulas, by the way. Okay, quite unlikely that exam is going to give you. And as a student, I failed in that sitting where the examiner can decide to give anyone who gave a formula, so you can do put the formula. <clears throat> so price uh, per unit remains at. Um, price per unit is equal to what is it? $12, so the price per unit is equal to $12, so the price per unit is $12, annual demand 60,000, Q is 1,200, divide by two, we multiply holding cost per unit per year, which will be told is, is equal to 0 0.5, annual demand is equal to 60,000, Q, 1,200, we divide by the cost per order, which is equal to six pounds, so six dollars. So cost in the case of VOQ policy, the current policy. Seven twenty six hundred. We get seven twenty six hundred. Okay, seven twenty six hundred. What if now we want to get? See, we want to get a discount. If you want to want to get a discount, then you must order at least ten thousand units. So the Q is equal to ten thousand units. In case you have to get the discount, the minimum inventory you must buy for you to get the discount is equal to ten thousand. Therefore, the price will be equal to one percent less. Will be you get a one percent discount. Therefore, you pay ninety nine percent of the price of, of the price was twelve. So therefore, times twelve. Give us the left point. Price per unit, 11.88. Yes, 11.88. 11.88. Come for the cost in case we do make the order. The holding cost, actually, be careful here. In between, the link is going to change. The holding cost, in case you take up the offer, is going to increase to $2. So the cost is increasing holding cost. But the cost per order, I think, since there's no mention, we assume it remains constant as it was before, which was equal to $6. So cost per order remains at $6. Okay. Therefore, purchase price, the cost, therefore, will be equal to purchase price, which is uh, the price per unit, which is now 11.88. Quantity, you mean a 60,000. Q now is 10,000. Divide by two. Holding cost has increased to $2. Okay, plus holding cost, plus ordering cost. Annual demand, 60,000 units. Divide by 10,000 units. Time the cost powder, which is equal to $6. To give us how much? 722,836. Eight, that's, yes. that's Yeah. And you advise the company. Should the company uh, uh, take up the discount offer from supplier? No. No, no. The company, therefore, should not take up the discount offer uh, from the supplier since it will, lead, it, will, it will result to an increase in the company inventory cost to 7.2836 from. Seven to twenty thousand six hundred. Clear. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good progress. Now, question: uh, Immaculate. Ask. 
I think I got lost somewhere. Uh, okay. um, in that 10,000. Yes, 10,000 10, over 2. 10,000 over 2, yes. Here. Yeah. What? I thought it's supposed to be 60,000. Okay, so here it's meant. Uh, what? Don't forget this 10,000 divided by 2. It's uh, its main work is true. It's uh, the bit, the part for getting the holding cost. Okay, but let me just repeat, okay. Uh, the graph, oh, I don't have the graph with me again. I'll just, okay, let me just draw the graph again. Uh, I'll draw this graph, but let me just do it again. Okay, that once you make the order, you you have your inventory at 10,000, is it? You have just made an order, okay? A times zero today. You have received the amount today, okay? So therefore, you, your inventory goes to 10,000. Then you, you use inventory on a constant rate, so they decrease constantly. Don't worry about my graph so much, okay? Then I'd just say you use those inventory for two weeks. Then at the end of the week two, make another order, get immediately. So all that until the end of the year. Okay. So therefore the graph is going to be such a thing. Maybe straight time. Don't worry about my graph. It's maybe straight time. Okay. That's what it's going to be here. So week two, week four, week six, all the way to week two by the end of the year. Now the question is, if you have to go and do a stock take, okay, uh, in this particular company, okay, how many inventory would you find? If the company, if you, the company has just made the order and received those inventory, the inventory is ten thousand. If now we are to the week two now, what's the inventory balance? It's zero because we are, assume that you have not you have not made the order. It's zero. Therefore, on a half basis, how many inventory can you find in this company? Is the maximum we have here ten thousand plus the minimum which is zero, which have it here. We divide by two, and you get five thousand. But on average basis, okay, in case you have to go and do a stock check, okay, how many inventory is this company holding? It's 5,000, not 6,000. Well, 6,000 is the annual demand. And don't forget, for this 6,000, it does not mean that you'll be, you'll be having those 6,000 from January to December. No, you are selling. You are, you are buying, selling, buying, selling. So it's fluctuating, like the, the cycle you have here, okay? Okay, going up, uh, decreasing, going up, decreasing. That's okay, how it will be like. Okay. Yeah, thank you. I think I know I got lost. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay, and that's given therefore the event because in case we're assume, or rather in case we have to take out the discount offer from the supplier. Now let's do another. No, I think question one could be a good question. I'll check it out. How it is like question one would be a good question, huh? And now having done that, I think now we can be able to attempt question one. Let me see this another better question. If no better question, then we can come back to that. Hmm, this I think is a better one. Question three. Question three, PKA company. Question three on PKA company. Yes, PK. Yes, attempt that question first. So I'll give you 10 minutes. So right now it's 7 7.15. So attempt the question uh, and we come back at 7.25. Let me see how far you will have done that question. So we do part B. It's a bit of what in quotes are uh, complex, but not complex as per se, but it has some extra things here and there, uh, which will mean that you, you're able to learn more out of it. Okay. So pick a company, question uh, three or part B.
I presuppose that you have gone through the question, you have attempted it. So let's see, what was the cost of the current policy and the saving? Cost of the current policy. Uh, 31,563. 31,563. Okay, so 31. That one, not 51, sorry. That 1,563. Current policy, that 1,563. Mm -hmm. Saving in case it's a UQ. UQ is 17,500. 17,500. Saving, therefore? Oh, 5, 6, 3, 9, 17, 500. 14, 0, 3. 14, 6, 3, 14, and 6, 3. 14, yeah. 14 and 6, 3 dollars, okay. Yes, and I guess the answer, yes. 14,063. Yeah, and okay, he gives us the answer, and that's quite encouraging. I hope all of you at least had. Okay, anyway, let's do it together. Now, the inventory. So, here to the current policy is that the company orders when the inventory balance reaches 100,000. So, you make the order once the inventory balance is 100,000. Okay. If the inventory, like when you make the order, or what triggers the order is in case the inventory balance reaches 12,000. This is what I think we do with we, we to as the order level, okay? This is the order level, okay? So the queue, this is the queue, okay? Mm, the demand is 625, uh, cost per order is 250, holding cost is 0.5, no discount supply is given, yeah, and you can get the cost. Very easy to forward. So let's attempt it. Let me just take a picture of this, because I don't have to be referring back and forth. Okay, let me go to back to my board here. <clears throat> okay, so the cost of the current policy. Mm -hmm. So current policy, the Q is equal to 100,000. Now, first of all, you, you may want to do this graph here so that things becomes a bit clearer because in case you don't do that, then it will be very confusing. You'll be told that you make the order when the event balances reaches that 5,000. So once the event reaches that 5,000 units, you make the order, okay? So assume that there's constant consumption of inventory, they decrease, they decrease, all the way to, let me see. So they decrease, and once they reach that 5,000 units, you place a new order, okay? So at this point in time, Okay, assume it is week two, okay, you make a new order. Then we told that you receive the order from supplier of 100,000 units in week four, okay? So let me do it here. Okay, assume this is week four, okay? So you make, we do receive that order two weeks later, okay? The lead time is two weeks later. So the question you may want to ask yourself, okay, is between the time you make the order, that is week two, and the time that you receive, okay, that is in week four, okay, how many units of inventory has the company consumed, okay, or co consumption uh, during the lead time, okay, as you are waiting for the inventory from supplier to arrive, okay, let's just go uh, simple work in here, consumption, uh, consumption, you really did time, consumption. It's a better pen. So consumption during lead time. Consumption during lead time. It'd be equal to in an year you consume six or like you sell six twenty-five thousand units. In an year, there's fifth weeks. Therefore, the consumption per week is the total units, six and five thousand units, divided by fifty. Okay, you get the amount you sell per week. 
they were told that you order in week two, we receive in week four, two weeks later. So therefore, within those two weeks, how much do you consume? You multiply by two. And you get how much? Mm. Twenty-five thousand. And you get twenty-five thousand. So during those two weeks, we get twenty-five thousand units. Don't forget, you made the order, okay? At this point, when the inventory balance was that five thousand, then you have consumed twenty-five. And therefore, by the time you receive <coughs> the inventory, already the company this remaining inventory equal to. So this is what you have consumed. So you've consumed within those two weeks here. You have consumed twenty-five. So what is it made? Therefore, is ten thousand. So we can see that this is ten thousand. The individual balance back to the top level, so such a way. Okay, don't forget here this inventory is a queue you've made the order from supplier, which is 10,000 units. Okay, that's 100,000. So, this is 100,000 units. The amount of orders, the amount of units you receive from supplier 100,000 units. Okay, now what's that imply that for you that we do have 10,000 that remain like that throughout the year? Okay, and this will refer to this 10,000 is referred to as the buffer inventory or the buffer stock, okay? The buffer inventory or the buffer stock, okay? Don't forget the only distinction, uh, no distinction, uh, the only extra thing you have to note, okay, compared to what we've been doing so far, cases where there was no buffer, is that the holding cost will be increasing, okay? The holding cost will be increasing because now you're holding an extra 10,000, okay? The company is holding an extra 10,000, the minimum stock of the company, so there'll be, a cost the company will be carrying. Okay, therefore the ten thousand become. When it comes to calculation of the holding cost, you have to take into account the holding cost you incur for the ten thousand. Okay, plus the hundred thousand plus these units you're buying. The hundred thousand you're buying uh, from supplier. Okay, that's once you get note of that, then consider the question. Okay, so current policy the Q is hundred. So current policy there is no discount. Therefore, we can ignore purchase cost. Okay, therefore relevant cost. Relevant in event cost will be equal to holding cost plus ordering cost. Holding cost Q divided by two. So this is a Q, hundred thousand. But you have the buffer stock. Don't forget you have buffer stock here. Okay, so plus the buffer stock ten thousand. Okay, we multiply by the holding cost paid per year plus the number of orders per year, time cost per order. So the only distinction between this and the other is that here we include the buffer stock. That's the only distinction. Other is the same with the other. Don't forget the buffer stock, you do in car holding costs. The buffer stock, you do in car holding costs. Sharon? Uh, when we say buffer stock, is it the same as the minimum stock level? Mm -hmm. It's the same. Yes, the same. It's the same? Yes, it's the same. Thank you. Okay, now having done that, we can now be able to have known that now we can be able to get the cost under the current policy. Is this someone else who had a question? It was okay, one well, yes. Thank you. So the cost of the current policy Q is 100,000 divided by two plus the buffer or the minimum stock level 10,000. Okay, don't forget in the, for the 10,000, you don't divide by two. Why? Because it is 10,000 throughout the year. It is not increasing, decreasing. It is the same throughout the year. So you don't divide by two. Don't forget for the 100,000, you divide by two because it is 100,000 here, then back to zero. 100,000, back to zero. That's why you divide by two. But for the 10,000, it is a, is a minimum. It doesn't change, okay, for the entire year. That's give you therefore, the holding cost. Multiply by the holding cost per unit per year, which is how much? So the holding, it's 0 0.5, 0 0.5 plus the number of orders per year, 625,000 divided by Q, the thousand times the cost per order, which is equal to, cost per order is 250 euros, which is equal to 50 euros. So therefore, currently, what was the cost? Current policy? 17,500. I guess 17,500. No, 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 sorry, 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 sorry. 31,563. 31,563. Okay, that's the cost under the current policy. 
Now, what if now we are to use a EOQ policy? So this is a proposal. What if we use the EOQ policy? Okay, is it going to help us? Is it going to make the cost uh, of the inventory decrease? So of course, the first thing is the Q uh, that is proposed by the EOQ. Okay, therefore. Okay, so the Q proposed by the EOQ is equal to the square root of 200 demand is 625,000 units. Cost per order is 250 euros. We divide by the holding cost per unit per year, which is 0 0.5 a euro. So the Q proposed by the EOQ will be how much? 25,000. The Q proposed by the EOQ policy is equal to 25 thousand units okay for the units now having known that now we can get the cost don't forget by the way the buffer inventory the minimum inventory is not influenced by the ordering policy you do keep as a company so even if you use the eoq the buffer still remain at ten thousand okay so the buffer will still remain at ten thousand okay it will still remain at ten thousand so it does not matter okay yes Therefore, we can say the cost will be equal to holding cost. Yes, Moses. Moses, please, please pardon, please pardon what you've just said right now. So the buffer inventory or the minimum stock the company keeps is not influenced by the the inventory ordering policy. You just use the company you want to keep some stock, which is not going to be influenced by whether you're going to buy hundred thousand, you're going to be buying at five thousand. It does not matter at the day. What matters is that this buffer inventory, his main purpose is to coach the company just in case there'll be going to be extra demand than what was anticipated, for example. Okay, or in case there'll be delays by supplier. So it is not influenced by the company reordering policy. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, therefore, the cost, therefore, will be equal to. So, here, don't forget now the Q has changed now. Okay, so the Q now is 25,000. Divide by two, the buffer is 10,000, it remains at 10,000. The holding cost remains the same, 0 0.5, plus the annual demand remains the same, 625,000 units. Divide by the Q is now 25,000 times 250 euros. The cost becomes how much? How much euro? How many euros? That is 17,500. Yes, 17,500. And this is what you got, I think. This one that's Moses, that is uh, Michael. Yes, okay, so that's quite good. Okay, so again, for the cost, in case the company implements the EOQ to be 17,500. Okay, of course, now we advise the company should the, should the company implement uh, the EOQ policy or not? Okay, we compare the cost, the saving. This was the cost before, this is the cost after, therefore, there'll be a saving. Okay, if you see, we can see, therefore. Net saving, therefore, again, simply the difference, okay, which is equal to 14,063 euros, the difference. So, therefore, the company should implement the use of EOQ policy since it yields an annual net saving of 14,063 euros. Clear? Question? Okay, and I think that's question more uh, can mark the end of the inventory management. Maybe before we uh, uh, exit on this particular area, I would want us to do one question where the discount is not based on the quantity. Okay, a case where supplier is giving discount, but the discount is not based on quantity. The discount is based on when you pay. Let's see if I can go to from those questions I've given you. Okay, let me see if I can go to. Yeah, question that has that case. The discount is based on yeah, here it is. Question four. On the question I've given you, uh, question four, uh, there's a case where you're meant to get, uh, you're meant to be analyzed, okay, as to whether the company,
this with this question four, you are trying to analyze as to the company should accept the discount or not. And the discount in this case, I want us to do the case where the discount is based on the number of days. Okay, the discount is based on the number of days. Okay, so question four, uh, go through it in the next one minute. Then we attempt it together. Question four, we attempt uh, uh, A Roman one. Okay, so in this example, the supplier is giving you discount, and these discounts, there are two of them, but I'll do the case for uh, discount based on the number of days, okay, when you pay, then you can try the case of uh, discount based on the quantities, the one you're doing this so far. You'll be told that the supplier is going to give you a 0 0.5 discount if you pay within 30 days, okay? So of course, it's me, therefore, uh, as a company, you buy from this supplier on credit, okay? So you buy on credit. And how many days do you take? You do pay in day 90, okay? So the company pays in day 90. However, in case you pay in day 30, that is you pay a supplier, uh, that six days earlier, they're going to give you a 0 0.5 discount. Assume we take the discount, okay? The assumption, let's take the discount. If you take the discount, the discount you'll be receiving, no, don't get the discount you're receiving is an income to you, okay? Therefore, discount receipt, discount you'll be receiving, okay? So, discount receipt, because 0.5% of the goods you buy from supplier, okay? In a year, you buy 120,000, okay? And in per unit, you pay 7.5, so times 7.5. Therefore, how much discount do you get from so this supplier? Four thousand five hundred. You get four thousand five hundred. Okay, that's a discount that we receive uh, if we are to accept the offer from the supplier. However, for you to give this offer, don't forget you. It means therefore you need to pay in the thirty. Currently, don't forget you pay in the ninety. Okay, before the proposal. Therefore, what we can do is that we assess how much money. Don't forget, as we mentioned, uh, don't forget suppliers. Uh, payables, uh, the trade credit you receive is a source of financing, okay, because you get goods on credit, okay, and you, in this credit, you do pay in the 90, okay, so they give you their money in form of goods that you pay in the 90, okay, then how much goods have you taken from them for those 90 days, okay, what we'll call the payables investment, so a payable, you remember it's given us the number of days, which is 90, out of the risk five, we multiply by the amount of purchase we make from them in a year, which in this case is what was it? Uh, 120 times 7.5, the total purchase in a year? Nine, 900 or 900. Total purchase in a year? 900,000. 900,000. Okay. Okay, this, this formula, just for those who may have forgotten, okay, this formula for those who got it is equal to payable is equal to the number of days divide by the risk five or the risk 60 whatever is the case multiply by the purchase on credit credit purchases okay credit purchases okay that's you just or simply the cost of sale whatever the case can be the cost of sales <clears throat> therefore how much of supplier do you do you owe them at any point in time okay uh, uh, before the discount offer two <laughs> two twenty five thousand two five thousand okay two twenty five thousand okay but currently uh, the amount of finance the amount of money but this money is in form of goods okay it's not actual money in quotes okay it's in form of goods okay that means if we all supplier at any point in time within the year to 25,000. Now let's accept the discount, which you've already accepted. Sorry, you mean, you, you, 
you pay in, you pay it means you pay in the 30 okay what you mean therefore if we take the day 30 okay to be equal to 30 out of the risk five we multiply the sales doesn't change the purchase we make from them doesn't change okay it remains at nine hundred thousand therefore how much do you owe them 70 74,000. Exactly. 73,973. 73,973, okay. And the first one was 221,000. 221, wow, that's a huge difference. Yeah. 221,917,80. Okay, okay. So can you know the point? So 221? 9, 9,17. 970,000 and second one was 80. There's a minute someone is trying to have the class. Uh, 73,972.6. So 73, 972.6. 972, 972. 972. 972. 972. 972. Okay. So therefore, before the amount of money used to get from suppliers was 221,000. After they only give you seven three, you can see this is, a, this is a decrease. Therefore, there will be a decrease in the amount of money they are financing you. They are giving you. Okay, don't forget the payable is interest free. Okay, uh, a supplier who's made who sold to you goods worth ten thousand at the end of the day ninety is not going to ask you for ten thousand one hundred. No, it's going to be asking for the same. Okay, and they give you they give you their money in court for free. Okay, in court for free. But now, if you accept the offer from supplier, okay, from the supplier, it means there will be a decrease in payable, okay? So payable decrease. Payable will be decreased. The amount you owe them will be decreasing. The amount they'll be financing you is decreasing from 221,000 to 73,973. To give us 140. 147. Mm -hmm. 944. 944. Yes. 147, 944,000. Now, since they were giving you finance, since, since the amount of money they are financing you has decreased by 147,000, then as a company, you have to let proof for someone else who is willing to finance you. Don't forget, the supplier used to give you 221 after they're giving you only 73. So there's a decrease of 147,000. So as a company, you are a cash, you have deficiency. Of one point seven, so you must go out there look for someone else to give you money. Who is this? Who is going to finance you? Who is going to give you this deficient? This uh, one point seven thousand, the decrease. You guys, here supplier is to give you money, two twenty one thousand. If you accept the offer. The amount they are giving you decreased to 73. So, as a company, you have to go back to where you were before. So, you need to look for someone to finance you for the decrease, for the deficiency of 147,000. Who is going to finance you for this deficiency? Ask for the question. Oh, we need to supply ourselves. We need to finance ourselves. As for say, assume you don't. This, no, there's no money, as I say. You have to go externally to get someone financing. Another supplier. <laughs> or this other supplier. Or bank. The bank. The bank is given here. The bank is going to finance you. There's a borrowing here. The bank is going to finance you. By if, uh, we're going to borrow for the bank at a cost of 4.5%. So the bank is charging you an interest, which the supplier now is charging you. In case you do accept the offer, you'll be paying an interest now because of the amount of money that you have borrowed from the bank. The amount you have borrowed, okay, is one forty seven nine forty four, and you pay an interest of four point five percent, which you never used to pay, but now you'll be paid because you have to for finances. Okay, they have how much interest therefore do you pay to the bank? This is the interest. Six thousand six hundred and fifty seven. 6,657. Fire. Yes. 
per year. That's the interest we pay to the bank. Now we compare, these are costs, don't forget, because it's an interest you're paying to the bank, okay, because you're borrowing money. So you compare the cost, okay, six, seven, six, uh, six, 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 seven, versus the benefit. You got a, a discount somewhere. Hey, well, this discount, you got discount somewhere. Yes, here is a discount, okay, and you got a discount of 4,500. So this is the discount you're giving, you're receiving, versus the cost. Now the question is therefore, are you going to accept this discount? Yes. No. Hey, be careful as you answer. <laughs> Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Sorry. It becomes six to six, six, five, seven. Now, this is a cost you are incurring. This is the benefit you are earning. So, the costs are more than the benefits, isn't it? Yes. Therefore, it makes no sense, therefore, to accept the offer from supplier. There's a cost you're incurring. And the net cost you're incurring, and so therefore, the net cost you're incurring, in case you accept the offer, the net cost you're incurring is 6657. These are costs minus the benefit, which was 4500, to give us 2157. These are costs. Therefore, that implies the folk as a company do not accept this offer from the supplier. It is yielding an annual net cost of 21. Seven. Therefore, don't accept the offer. Clear? Yes, yeah. sir. Okay, so that's on payables management. Okay, so that's on payables management. Okay, that's on payables management. Simply comparing, for example, uh, how much is the benefit you're receiving for the use of uh, supplier's money versus the benefit, uh, versus the cost you, be, you may be incurring for, for paying, for example, a bit earlier. In this case, you pay in the 30 as opposed to in pain in the 90. Question? Okay, if there's no question, then uh, next time we meet, we start off by how do we manage account receivable? Okay, so the next time we meet, we discuss on how we manage account receivable. And by the way, I can give you two questions for the assignment. Now, in this question, I won't give a lot of question. So in this question, we can do part B. We have done part A, so you can do part B, I guess, isn't it? Because you are conversant with all the, whatever we discussed. So uh, let's do part B, so, Roma, uh, Roman 2, sorry. You've done Roman 2 together, Roman 1 together, so you can do part A, part A, Roman 2, as the assignment. And what else can you do? This we done together already. And question one, I think question one now you can do. And question one, part a so part a question one part a okay question one part a and question four part a question part a roman two you get it yes okay so you can do those two questions Mm, okay, okay. Okay, they, because I think within 10 minutes will be done. So I think I can add another question. Oh, anyway, do just do those two questions. Okay, so question one, just repeat. Question one, part A. Question four, A, Roman two. Okay, so you on Wednesday. Okay, see you then. See you on Wednesday. Enjoy your evening. Don't forget to sign. Yeah, so enjoy your evening.